Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Good morning, good morning. Hello, YouTube. Um, it is Wednesday morning, the 21st, October 21st. We're a little early, about 7.20 a.m. I like getting doing my lives in the morning like this. It seems like we get a lot of, a lot of viewers in the morning. Um, so there's certain times of the day that I feel that people are tuning in or watching or have the free time to, to tune in and say hello. Um, so it seems like mornings are a very good time uh, early like this. Some of my most viewed lives have been like at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Uh, when COVID hit, uh, any time of the day was good because not many people were in their office working, so they had more free time to log on to the internet. And we used that very, uh, we used we used Facebook Lives a lot during when, in the height of COVID to communicate our message and create business and educate people. So. Um, if you're tuning in live, if you're coming in, uh, just say hello uh, where you're tuning in from. That always helps. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Mary. Um, and anybody else who's joining in, I'm just going to uh, go on my computer and I can read comments better. We'll be talking about farmed salmon today, uh, the, the two different types of farmed salmon. So there is, of course, the farmed salmon that you want to totally avoid, and there's a farmed salmon that isn't quite so bad. I'm going to talk about the differences of those and uh, how you can find those. So um, it's um, it is not that easy to find the one. And I'll talk about all the details. I'll even show some pictures here because I have stuff queued up on the iPad here that I can show you. I thought I had Aroma Times window open. Okay, there we are. All right, just drop a comment. I can uh, comment back. I got that in view now. So, all right. Um, if you know me at all, and you know Roma Time, uh, if you've seen any of my videos on salmon, I've interviewed several, well, a couple marine biologists, um, some experts in, in the, the aquaculture industry, sustainability industry, farmed salmon, is, and I, you might hear me say this sometimes, I talk about open pen, open pen farm salmon. Uh, that's the term that is the most popular type of farm salmon. That is the one to absolutely 100% avoid uh, open pen system salmon, then you have closed containment. So I'm gonna talk about the difference, the difference of the two and show some pictures. If you know anybody that eats salmon, uh, tag them, share this video with them. Uh, it's gonna be an educational video on uh, farm salmon. Now I could literally talk for eight hours on why you should not eat farm salmon and what they do in salmon farms and the, and the open pen systems, open uh, pen farms, uh, and the detriment to the environment and this and that. I could literally, literally do lecture after lecture on this. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna talk about what open pen is, and maybe briefly touch upon um, some of the downfalls of it, and I'll talk about the upsides of closed containment. Uh, we do not do closed containment salmon here at the restaurant. We don't do any farm salmon. Closed containment, if there was no wild salmon available and we had to serve salmon, then closed containment would be the way to go. Uh, other fish are raised closed containment here in the Hudson Valley. There's a couple people, a couple farms that do steelhead trout, and um, those are closed containment systems. So, of course, because they're inland, closed containment inland. So, I'll show some pictures of that as well. All right, so if you know me, like I said, you know that we do not serve farm salmon. I'm very, very spoken, outspoken about farm salmon, the dangers of it to our health. Uh, the horrific uh, farming methods that is open pen salmon farms, and then um, the environmental environmental destruction, habitat destruction. It's 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 just it's terrible. Even even the salmon farms that say they're organic, sustainable, um, natural, antibiotic free. Uh, there's there there is no right way to do the wrong thing, as Alex Alexandra Morton says. I've interviewed her several times. There's a lot of great videos of me interviewing her. She's a marine biologist who showed up in British Columbia in the late 80s, and she was there to study the orca whales. And when she got there, they started putting in salmon farms in British Columbia. And she threw her hands up and she goes, stop, stop, you cannot put salmon farms here. And of course, it was all backed by big business and the government. And she goes, this, you cannot put salmon farms in the migratory path of wild salmon. This does, doesn't work like that. And she knew this back in the 80s, this was not good. So now she has seen the ecosystem co literally collapse there uh, 30 years later. She has witnessed uh, orca whales going away because uh, the farm salmon go away. I'm sorry, the wild salmon go away. 
because the farm salmon kills them off, and I'll show you why. This is part of the open uh, pen uh, system of farming. So the wild salmon go away, which is food for the whales. So the orca whales disappear, but the salmon is also food for the bears, for the grizzly bears. And she says, you know, every fall, the bears are frantically, frantically running around the streams, the rivers, uh, to catch salmon, and it's, it's not happening. The salmon aren't swimming upstream. Uh, so there's grizzly bears that are literally starving. Uh, salmon is a keystone species, which means so many other species rely upon the existence, existence of wild salmon. And farmed salmon, farmed salmon, no matter where it comes from, is killing off other, other salmon and other species of fish that are in the ocean there, in the bays. So it doesn't matter if they say that, oh, it's hormone-free anti or antibiotic-free or every salmon farm has disease. You can go on Google, you can search some of the best salmon farms like Glock Duhart, and you can see um, these companies, there's people out there, out there filming them from a distance of them removing thousands and thousands of pounds of dead fish. Mortality rates happen. Scottish, they say, is some of the best farmed salmon in the world. Um, the Scottish mortality rate, they have to say that. They have to brag about farmed salmon um, in Scotland because the mortality rate is over 20%. That means two out of every 10 fish actually die. Now, there's more than two out of 10 fish sick. Those other fish live um, and they get processed and then sent to restaurants, grocery stores, uh, they get packaged and, and on their way into for human consumption. So two out of 10 are sick enough to die. The others are sick. They're treated with slice, they're treated with all kinds of things, but they might not be treated with or, or, uh, antibiotics. Uh, but that's just a constant in their feed that they typically put. They don't administer it. See, there's, it's very tricky when it comes to wording of, of how things are raised. So for example, if something says um, never given or, or antibiotic free, it doesn't mean it was never given antibiotics. It just means there's no residue in the fish um, or the beef. And it doesn't even mean that there's no residue in every single um, thing that's being processed. When I first got into to organic natural beef, when I was in Colorado as a chef at uh, Bonnie, uh, Woodmore Country Club up in Monument, Colorado, and I remember um, the past president's wife asked me if I could source hormone-free beef, antibiotic-free beef, and I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on with beef. I was, I was a young chef, I was 24 years old. I had, really wasn't into that yet. And um, I started doing some research, and I met with the first company I ever met with that was doing natural beef. The guy came in, gave his whole presentation, and because I'm always curious, I ask questions. So I said, so, so how do you determine that the beef is antibiotic free? Like, 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 how do you determine this? Like, how's the beef raised? It's come, going through feedlots or, he goes, oh Marcus, so we, we test carcasses, we test the beef. I said, oh, you test every single? He goes, no, no, we could never test every single head of beef that we process. We test one to two head out of per hundred. That means 2% maximum of the beef is getting tested. Now the beef was never all theirs to begin with, the cattle. It goes through a series of, of feeders, uh, finishers, feedlot, and so they consolidate, they're not raising the beef, they consolidate the beef. The farmers that they're contracting with are supposed to be hormone free or antibiotic free, but at this point it's antibiotic free, which means they could have been given antibiotics 30 to 60 days prior to processing. So they take two head of cattle, 2%, they would test it, and if that were to come back residue free or under a certain level, under a certain level, because that's also another thing, um, if that's under, if it's under a certain level, then they can deem the whole batch, the whole batch, they don't have to test anything else, uh, antibiotic free. And I was like, makes no sense. Like, like you have no control of the cattle, where they're coming from, they're all coming from all these different feeders and, and ranches. So, and that's the reality of that. So now, if you say hormone free or antibiotic free, doesn't mean they weren't given antibiotics. The term you want to look for is never ever administered antibiotics. Which doesn't mean it wasn't given vaccinations and other medications because all cattle go through a vaccine. Very, 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 very few cattle do not get vaccinated. Um, so they're still administered drugs and still administered things. And then when cattle do get sick, they get pulled out of the program, they get administered, administered antibiotics and put somewhere else. Um, um, or if it's a, just a no antibiotic, they get weaned and put back into the program. So it's very tricky how they word things. So sometimes they'll say, oh, we don't administer antibiotics to our salmon. No, they don't administer them to them. They just constantly feed them to them in the feed because the feed is laced with it. 
So don't get caught up on, on sometimes on, on some of this terminology because it's, it's designed to trick you. It's designed to, to mislead you if you don't ask the right questions. So organic salmon, there's no such thing as an organic certification for salmon or for fish. So you really can't, the, 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 there is a USDA one for shrimp. Um, not many people use it or do it because it's hard to do. So th when, when you see something, when you go to a restaurant that says organic Scottish salmon, it's a self-regulated term, the word organic, when it comes to things, when it comes to salmon like that. So um, whatever they deem their practices as organic, the company themselves, they can call themselves organic. So, which is of course not true and it's not the organic that you and I think of when it comes to organic. So. Uh, don't get caught up on that um, low density. Um, salmon get farmed two, two per bathtub. There's a density typically in, in close, uh, open, open pen farms. If they say low density, it's typically one per bathtub. So the fish still swim on top of each other. They still go to the bathroom on top of each other. They still, the, the, it's, it's a disaster. If you, if you, the problem with salmon is it's under the water. You never see what's happening underneath the water. If you drove by a feedlot of beef, and this is a great analogy I like to use, if you drove by a feedlot of beef and two out of every 10 cattle were dropping dead and the other ones could barely walk, you'd be like, why are we eating beef? Well, that's what it's like underneath the salmon farms. So whenever you go to a, a salmon company, a farm salmon company's website, they never, ever, ever show you the real underneath in the pen and the open containment, open pen system, what's happening with their salmon. They would never, ever put like a live cam down there because um, it would destroy their business. It would literally destroy their business and it would wake some people up. In the meantime, they take pictures of a pristine bay, um, the mountains behind it, and saying salmon farmed in the wild, salmon raised in the wild. They don't, sometimes they don't even use the word farmed anymore. Salmon raised in the wild. Faroe Islands is famous for that. Salmon raised in the wild. <laughs> so people think, and then chefs think it's wild because they see the term wild, and the wild just means it's out in the ocean. So, um, all right. So, two different types of salmon. So I always say the word open pen because open pen and closed containment systems have, have, are, very, are much, much different. Um, the, um, the detriments to the environment are much, much different. The detriments to the other fish in the environments are much, much different. So closed containment system, if you, if you had to eat farm salmon, you would want to eat closed containment, closed contained, uh, cl closed containment system. So this is what a closed containment system is, all right? This is inside of a building, all right? Those are, those are big pools of water. Inside there live the fish. This could be a salmon farm. This actually is a salmon farm. Um, and the salmon live inside of there. Now what happens, oh, let's go to the next tab here. This is an open pen salmon farm. This sits out in a bay in the ocean. See the waves and the current that come in? So if the salmon are sick, which are, again, Scotland's claiming they have the best farm salmon in the world, two out of 10 actually die because they're sick and many more are sick. So see those waves crashing into that open, that, that, that open pen? The open pen actually has the netting system. It's not that the, the water that's inside the farm there, inside that net gets outside into the bay and the stuff that's outside in the bay gets in and it washes all the lice, pushes it into the bay, takes all the, all the, 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 the salmon viruses, the, 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 the flu viruses that the salmon get, and washes it out into the bay. And this is what Alexandra Morton was complaining about in the 80s, late 80s, 88, 89, 1990, was everything that's inside, everything that's inside this right here, inside the, the, the pen, all the filth and debris, the feces, uh, the lice, everything gets washed out into the bay and then all of a sudden infects the wild salmon that swim past here because salmon farms produce the best farm salmon in where the wild salmon live. So this is the migratory path. So wild salmon will swim past this, go up into the, up into the stream, spawn, then the baby fry come back down and swim past the farm and the lice attach and other diseases attach to these baby salmons whose immune system aren't developed yet and this kills the salmon in their first weeks uh, in their first week of life, this can actually kill a baby salmon or fry. So the salmon never mature and go into the ocean. So every time you think that you're, every time you think that you're actually, um, every time you think you're buying uh, farm salmon because you're saving wild salmon is actually the opposite. The more farm salmon you buy, 
The more farm salmon chefs buy and serve, the more wild salmon they're killing off. That's just, that's just the science of this. This is the facts. This is how this works. All right. So um, urge chefs to stop serving. Faroe Faro Island is probably the worst because the Faroe Islands tricks, trick the chefs the most because the Faroe Islands have this great marketing program, amazing marketing program. The Faroe Island um, Association that represents the salmon farms there really go out and spend extra money. Um, they advertise. They, they mislead people with, 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 with the way they spin this. And so Faro, a lot of people think, oh, Faro Islands is the best. And you have these salespeople walking into restaurants and just talking to chefs, Faro Island this, Faro Island that, oh, Faro Island's the best salmon. Folks, it's, it's open pen salmon farms. When you stick one salmon per bathtub density or two salmon per bathtub density and you stick them together, no matter where you stick them, no matter where you stick them, you're going to create filth, disease, lice, waste. You're going to, that's just the environment what happens, okay? That's... If you put garbage anywhere, you're going to attract rats. The rats will find the garbage, right? So when you put these salmon farms anywhere you put them, doesn't matter how the waters are, how clean and pristine the waters are, the salmon bring the waste. They bring the filth. The way they feed them, it's just, it's just, that's just what happens. So the closed containment systems are much different than that. All right, the, the closed containment system, if disease, lice, anything gets into any of those pools in there, these are indoor, indoor pools, if anything gets into there, it gets filtered out immediately. It goes through a filtration process, it gets filtered out, and it doesn't go back in because it's a reoccurring water system, right? So it goes through a filtration and gets used again. So they can, they can literally filter everything out of the water and not make sure it doesn't get back into the water. So the fish are constantly going through um, a, a filtered water system, and then they give motion to this water so they can act like, act like, a, like a stream. So it's like the fish are always sitting there in a stream which helps them develop more muscle, helps them grow faster. In fact, closed containment system salmon grow, I think, three times faster, four times faster than open pen farmed salmon. The downfall, the biggest downfall to closed containment salmon farms, the biggest downfall is profits, the lack of profits. So it's a very, very greedy business. All these Norwegian companies um, flock to Canada, they go to other countries where they can own the government, throw up, up, up pens in the ocean, destroy the environment, raise farm salmon very, very, very cheaply. I've taken pictures. I love to, when I go to Restaurant Depot, I'll walk in and I'll go to the seafood section and I'll take pictures of farmed salmon, $4 a pound. Faroe Island salmon, $6 a pound. And I'm like, we pay at least twice that price, three times that price for our wild truly line caught wild salmon. Um, so it all, it all comes down to profits. It costs seven times the amount to build this. Seven times the amount to build this. You have to build a building, you have to put in all this stuff, you have to put in filtration systems. Um, this is complicated, much more complicated than basically fabricating nets and throwing nets that float in a bay and then throwing the salmon in there. You don't need filters, you don't need any of that kind of stuff because the salmon do their thing and the waste goes right into the bay. Now, the waste, the bottom of these oceans, um, these bays, are horrific. A salmon farm can produce an equal amount of waste, an open pen, open pen system, can produce an equal amount of waste of a city of the population of 10 to 12,000 people on a daily basis. That drops right to the ocean floor and it sits there. So what they do is they move the nets every so often, they'll move the nets to somewhere else in the bay and they say, oh, that part of the bay is regenerating. Folks, that stuff never regenerates. When you put that, that amount of feces, and it's, it's, it's meters, they call it meters and, and feet, feet, yards of that in the bottom of the ocean, there is no regeneration. Um, there's videos of people down there in, the, in this filth um, and this just this dead ocean space. I interviewed a lobster uh, guy last year from Nova Scotia, or two years ago, a company, a lobster company, and he actually lost they lost all their lobster one day because the salmon farm that was in the bay treated the salmon with an illegal uh, chemical that they were not supposed to be using, but they put it in anyway. They put it in for lice or something, I forgot what they put it in for, he said, and all the lobsters in the bay the next morning were belly up. Everything was dead in the bay. Um, so it's not only the feces and the waste and the viruses, it's actually the chemicals they're putting in too are a massive detriment. So the more we support the Faroe Islands, the more we support Scottish farm salmon, 
uh, Verlasso, Chilean, all, the more we support this, the more we're supporting an environment that's not going to regenerate, killing off wild salmon, um, and not creating a future. A key, killing off a keystone species. Look up the definition of keystone species. There's many other things. Trees rely upon salmon that are, that are a thousand miles upstream. For a tree to properly grow relies upon salmon because the salmon swim up at the stream, they spawn, they die, bear eat them, then the bear goes to the bathroom, provides fertilizers when they go to the bathroom of what's, what, what they ate with the salmon, and that goes into, into the soil, and that provides nutrients. Um, so there's many, there's many species just beyond the human species and bears that rely upon salmon for. So salmon is a true keystone species. Once salmon is decimated, it's gonna be a, 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 ripple, a, triple, a, a ripple down effect on a lot of other different species. And we're noticing the whales, the orca whales, as Alexandra Morton has said, that they are disappeared. <coughs> Maybe I'll reach out to Alexandra Morton and do another um, interview with her. The First Nations in Canada, two years ago, occupied salmon farms. A lot of the salmon farms were given uh, water rights illegally, or they tricked the First Nations. The First Nations have water rights, and they, they, they saw, the First Nations saw what was happening uh, with the salmon farms and killing off their wild catch. I mean, there's not, there's not many, when I, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, when I would look at lists to buy salmon, when I was an executive chef at the country clubs I worked at, you could pick wild Alaskan salmon, you could pick wild British Columbia salmon, um, river salmon from Oregon and Washington State. That stuff doesn't really exist anymore. The wild salmon from Alaska does because there's zero farms. Zero farms in Alaska, which is why Alaskan salmon are so abundant. You go down to British Columbia and the catch has been decimated. People are going out of business. You can't find them that much anymore on seafood lists wholesale for chefs because it's they've literally decimated and killed off this species in British Columbia. And it's just that simple from one boundary to another where they allow salmon farms where they don't allow salmon farms. Salmon are a very smart fish. They come back to the exact spot they spawned. So it's not like they, they spawn in, in, in British Columbia and they swim to Alaska and then go up a stream in Alaska. No, they come back to the exact stream they spawned to the exact spot that they spawned. So if you kill the salmon first thing when they get coming out, out of the gate, out of the river, when they're the baby, baby salmon, there's nothing coming back to that river. There's nothing coming back to that bay. So the fishermen there are going out of business. Their livelihoods are going out of business. So this is why Alaska has such an abundant catch and it's just one border away, right? Because the salmon are instinctually tuned to going back into that spot where they, where they spawn. So the First Nations in Canada, on the West Coast, started occupying salmon farms, occupying the land, protesting, protesting all these salmon farms. So they were trying to, when their leases were up, to actually get rid of them and not have them come back because of what they were, what, what they were doing um, and destroying. So the good news is once you get rid of a salmon farm, the lice isn't there and the disease isn't there actively, so the salmon can regenerate. Of course, the bottom of the ocean floor is a whole other issue. Um, there's some great videos of, great, great, great video footage of salmon farms, all the waste that they actually pump the processing plants, the processing plants. You have to clean salmon, you gotta pump the waste somewhere, so they actually pump it back into the bottom of the, these bays and just, just, I mean, it's like a pipeline that just pumps out blood, disease. They've actually gone down and Alexandra Morton's crew has gone down there. They've actually grabbed the water, tested it, and it's filled with all kinds of stuff that, that the government denies exists in Canada. Um, she's actually gone into grocery stores in British Columbia, picked up farmed, farmed salmon in a grocery store, local farmed salmon, taken and gotten it tested for, for certain um, um, bacteria, uh, viruses. And again, there's viruses that are showing up that the Canadian government denies that even exist in the country. Because once, those, once, once they admit that, the, that it's there, there's big problems. Um, the Canadian government was so anxious to get salmon farms that they actually uh, cut a deal with salmon farms. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, mortality is part of the game. Salmon automatically die because of the way, no matter if they're quote unquote organic, low density, salmon just automatically just die because of, um, because of the way they're raised. So the government, as part of the deal to get salmon farms into Canada, these salmon farms, these Norwegian companies, said to the Canadian government, if you really want us, when, the mor when mortalities happen, you'll pay us full price for the salmon. And the Canadian government said, sure, of course we'll do that. So they don't need the insurance like other, like other farms. When their crop, when their salmon die off, 
they actually get money right from the Canadian government, full retail price. So for them, there's there's zero, there's zero incentive to do it to do it the right way because they're getting paid anyway. And when you visit these small Canadian cities and towns, these coastal towns where the salmon farms are, the locals are just up in arms because they can't get they can't get a librarian at the library, but the government's throwing all this money, all this tax money, uh, into an industry that's destroying everything. I always say the true test, the true way to find out if a salmon farm is doing the right thing is you talk to the locals in that community. That, you don't talk to the salesperson, you don't talk to the chef, you don't talk to the fishmonger, you talk to the people in that community where they have to live every day with the stench, with seeing what's going on in the salmon farms, with watching them unload thousands and thousands of pounds of dead salmon onto a truck, and then that stuff, that stuff is going, is going, goes to rendering plants. And it's rendered down probably in the dog food, cat food. So when you see cheap, <laughs> cheap cat food and cheap dog food and it says made with salmon, you know, it's probably the dead, the dead fish that come out of these, these pens that are loaded with tons and tons of bacteria and viruses. And then we wonder why our dogs all of a sudden and our pets uh, are getting cancer and getting sick at two, three, four years old. Um, you know, it just doesn't happen by chance. This, this happens um, because of what we've done out of greed because of this. So. Um, again, those are the two types of salmon farms. Salmons that are raised inside pens cost seven times the amount. Um, and then salmon where they just throw nets out into the bay and everything is just, you know, a free for all basically. Uh, so um, I'm going to cut this video off now. Um, I can talk a lot more about salmon, the feed and all kinds of things. Uh, farm salmon, this is why we don't serve farm salmon. I educated myself many, many, many years ago. Uh, in 1999, I had the pleasure of sitting next to Henry Lovejoy the president and founder of a company called EcoFish. Uh, you can find him in the store now, it's called Henry and Lisa's Natural Seafood. Uh, Henry was my mentor in the very beginning on all of this, uh, and um, I learned a lot from him, and uh, he made an impact in the way, in shaping my, my career, especially when it comes to sustainable, uh, sourcing sustainable seafood, all kinds of sustainable seafood. So that's the difference, so if you have to buy, if you have to buy salmon, you get closed containment system, farm salmon. The, down, the, the, the downfall of that is there's, you just can't go into a store and say, oh, I want closed containment system. Salmon, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's one of those things that's very, very, very hard to find, again, because not many companies are doing it and you're gonna pay a premium for it, so you might as well buy the true wild salmon. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention really quickly. Um, huh, I forgot. Okay, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer questions uh, on this thread, so just ask questions. And I'll be happy to go back and answer. Good morning, everybody. If you, um, if you are tuning in and this was educational, informative, if you like this, please just drop a comment. Um, share it with somebody. Share it with a chef. If you can share this video with a chef and we can get one more chef to switch and stop serving farm salmon, that's so many more salmon a week so many farm salmon a week that we can avoid and so many wild salmon a week that hopefully we can impact. The, the, way, the way to stop this madness is to take their money away from these big corporations, these Norwegian corporations. That's the, that's the way to stop this madness. And we take their money away by stop purchasing their product. That's plain and simple. Stop purchasing their product. Let chefs know. Let chefs know that, that you know, um, you're not going to, to put up with, you're not gonna order and there's better options out there and if you care for the environment, you will truly serve wild, wild salmon. Um, one of the big, and I'll do a video on this maybe tomorrow or the next day, on some of the terminology that, that, that um, cause there's a lot, a lot of restaurants lie, a lot of chefs lie, not purposely, some are misled and some lie on purpose, they'll just put wild salmon cause they, 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 just, they just do that. Uh, cause they know that you don't wanna buy farm salmon. One of the things you look for on a menu, if it says wild Atlantic salmon, there's no such thing as wild Atlantic salmon available commercially. So, or if it is available in the very, very few spots that it's fished in Scotland, um, it's, it's more expensive than wild Alaskan salmon, literally more expensive than wild Alaskan salmon. So nobody's out there, um, restaurants out there buying it and selling it for $20 an entree, it's just not, not happening. Um, even $30 or $40 an entree, it's stuff that, that would get landed and be like $60 a pound, $70 a pound once it's filleted out, and you eight ounce portion, $35 on the plate. There's no restaurant selling wild Atlantic salmon, all right? When you go somewhere and it's $100 an entree or $80 an entree, yeah, then maybe that's the case, but there's just so few around that no restaurant's gonna, gonna buy 
truly wild Atlantic salmon. So if it says wild Atlantic salmon, um, they're, they're, being, they're misleading you. Either they, on purpose, they're doing it or they just don't know. But do not fall for wild Atlantic salmon. Um, that is a scam. It is farmed Atlantic salmon. Um, and all king salmon is not wild. King salmon being from the Pacific, from the Pacific Ocean, a lot of companies are now farm raising king salmon. So just because it says king salmon, uh, British Columbia farms king salmon. Uh, New Zealand or New Zealand farms king salmon. Or a king salmon is a farmed salmon from the southern hemisphere. So uh, just because it's king does not mean it's wild. It's it could be farmed as well. Um, coho, uh, I've seen farmed sockeye salmon before. Inland containment system. There used to be a, an inland con inland farm that went out of business. I think called Little Falls or something. It was in. Um, Idaho maybe, and they were doing these um, sockeye salmon, small sockeye salmons um, that I saw years ago, 2000, 2000 2001, 2002, they were, they were, they were doing this product, um, but they've still, since gone out of business. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Sh please share this video with a chef, um, Faroe Island, Scottish salmon, um, um, Canadian salmon, Bay of Fundy salmon, British Columbia salmon, Aura King salmon, uh, Verlasso, Chilean salmon, all farmed, all farmed. Norwegian salmon, Norwegian salmon is all farmed. There's nobody out there, there's nobody out there um, um, having a massive catches of wild Norwegian salmon. It does not exist anymore. If you, look at the, if you look at the graphs when they started putting salmon farms in in the 60s, 70s, 80s, when they really became popular, the wild salmon population keeps declining in the Atlantic Ocean and they keep adding more farms. You think by them, by, by, you would think that the opposite, you add more farms, you take the the um, you reduce the catches of the wild of the wild Atlantic salmon. They're going to proliferate. But no, the more salmon farms you add, the more it kills off the wild salmon. It's just what's happening. You look at the graphs. You look at the numbers. Salmon is not coming back in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, there might be certain spots, but as a whole, the Atlantic salmon is not flourishing. The more more and more farms you add, it's not happening. All right, thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, it looks like a delivery just pulled in. I got an 8 o'clock phone call, and it's uh, maintenance day here. We're closed today here at the restaurant. It is maintenance day. Uh, we have some wood to stack, and we have some heaters to put together for the back patio and some things like that. Uh, we're back open tomorrow on Thursday. Everybody have an amazing day, and thank you for the support, and we'll see you soon.